Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Welcome to the Photographer's Eye Podcast. My name is Omar Gonzalez, and in this podcast, we interview photographers of different genres just to pick their brain, and you know what? Steal all their knowledge. <laughs> in today's episode, we have Benjamin Canaric. He is a fashion photographer based out of Paris, although he was born in Toronto. And why would he leave Toronto? It's like the mecca of fashion photography. Honestly, I don't know anything about fashion photography, so I'm really excited to pick Benjamin's brain about fashion photography. You know, my perception of fashion photography is, is flip through fashion magazines if, you know, while I'm at the dentist. It's not like I go and, you know, buy L or Bazaar or any of those. So while I'm at the dentist flipping through these magazines, I, I love the photography. I love fashion photography, but I'm also confused by it. And so I hope Benjamin can shed some light on the strangeness. I find a lot of it really weird. I find like any lighting technique goes. There are really no rules. And you know, in portrait photography, it seems that we're stressing so much about lighting technique and having soft light and beautiful light and direction of light. And it seems in a lot of fashion photography, it's like anything goes. And so I want to know, that's the main thing I want to know is, can you almost do anything if you're an established fashion photographer? There seems to be a line that you cross from portrait and glamour photography into the strange world of fashion photography. All right, let's talk to Benjamin. Do some technical stuff well, my, here. My real wife quick. is asking me, are we live or is this going to be uh, recorded? No, it's recorded. We're recording now. So we're going to start in three, two, one. Hey, we're live here with Ben Canaric. No, no, we're not live. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much to, uh, for coming on the podcast because it's a brand new venture and you're so gracious to just come on and, and you know, thank you. Well, you're very welcome. I'm a huge fan of your work. Um, My and I've been following you on YouTube for a few years and, uh, uh, I love your sense of humor. I think. <laughs> Thank I think you. You're a very funny man and incredibly talented. And I love your Fuji film uh, reviews. And I feel deeply honored as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. On your, on, your, on your podcast. Did you have a Fuji film, you know, for fashion? Or is that something that's relatively recent? Is having the, you know, jumping into the smaller camera. I know you use X-T2, X-T3s. Um, I still have my Nikon gear. I, I won't go back too far because I know we have 30 minutes. Um, while I was, when I was shooting film, I was shooting Nikon. Um, and medium format, I was shooting Hasselblad. Uh, and then I converted to digital. I went into the Canon format. I was Canon photographer, sponsored by Canon in France. Um, and then I switched uh, back to uh, Nikon. I became attracted to mirrorless based on a lot of um, critiques and reviews I heard about Sony and um, specifically Sony at the time because there, there weren't a lot of competitors out there. And then I just basically walked into a shop one day and I saw the Fuji. Oh, yeah. All you have to do is pick it up. Here there it is right go. here. <laughs> and it was so diminutive and, and beautiful to to handle and I read a lot of interesting reviews about it and I know that if, if you know as well as I do you're a photographer that if you know what you are shooting for and the size of what you are shooting for you, you can basically determine you, whether you could use anything yeah absolutely much. yeah I mean I had I had a, a, a six by four meter billboard on the can uh, on the boardwalk at the can festival which was shot with a Canon 10D, which was like oh, six please. megapixels. Yeah, those guys are no megapixels. That's great. And uh, Nikon is coming out with, uh, they finally have mirrorless cameras with two card slots. Is that something you would use? Uh, no, actually, to be honest, I haven't touched my Nikon. No offense to Nikon. I love them. I have four uh, DA10s and about 12 of their lenses. I haven't picked up the Nikon oh, in wow. almost two years. Um, I, you, sh you should know, however, I, I, I use two GFX 50Ss, uh, the medium format Fujifilm uh, cameras, um, 
and I have six of their lenses. And I um, oh, that's I've great. Ordered, I've just ordered a couple of XT fours. I'm getting them next week. I use for all of our shoots. We primarily and systematically use the XT three either on a gimbal or a monopod for all of our videos. And um, I would say of the last ten shoots. Six of them were with the X-T3, and four of them were with the GFX 50S. Wow. And this is rather historic. I know it's meaningless to a lot of people, but I've shared this with Fujifilm. And um, I just recently did a photo shoot for Vogue magazine, and it's coming out in about two weeks. And it was shot with the X-T3. And the uh, results were outstanding. So I I have no complaints about the output of the uh, Fuji film. I love fashion photography when I'm looking through magazines, Elle, Vogue, but yeah, yeah. yeah, all of them. And but for a lot of it for me is just strange and bizarre. And I Mm -hmm. feel like in a good way, in a liberating way where as a portrait photographer, I'm very deliberate in trying to have the right light, the right wardrobe, um, to make sure that everything is perfect. But mm-hmm. as I flip through magazines, I, I mean, can you have a shoot where someone's holding a rubber chicken and, <laughs> you know, it's accepted? I feel yeah, like it's, it seems Walker, like, yeah. yeah, like fashion photography, it, it's almost like doesn't matter the lighting. Sometimes it's really harsh and, I wouldn't want to say ugly lighting, but no, it's ugly. It's, it's and right. A lot of people, you're right. Absolutely. So, are is that how your mindset works? Like, it, are you liberated by anything goes? Is that what the world is behind your viewfinder, or are those choices very deliberate? Like, you're picking the right rubber chicken. You know. I love your question, and uh, we did. Everyone should know. Omar said, "Ben, I'm going to keep you on the straight and narrow because we only have 30 minutes." So I will try to respond. First first and foremost, um, technique is important. It's only used as a vehicle to get a a specific outcome. So technique works only to get what you're trying to get. Yeah. Technique should not be a means to an end. Um, uh, uh, Basically, you know, there are different movements in photography, in fashion photography. There are some people who are using direct flash on top of a... Uh, six megapixel Canon uh, vintage digital camera, and that's oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, that's what is happening. Um, so basically, yes, it is deliberate, and no, it isn't deliberate, because my philosophy is when I do a shoot, and that is let stuff happen. Mm. Let things, let accidentals are really important. It's the shot between the shot that's really important. Or it's the movement between the pose. I hate to use the term pose because when people think pose, they think something that really is not really what I'm trying to accomplish. And even when I do do a pose or the model does a pose, it's it's done for a reason. It's almost a parody of itself. Really? It, yes. We'll, we'll say it's we, we will literally go, let's just really make this outlandish and make it obviously tacky and yeah it, 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 oh that's that's it, great that you said that because that i was going to ask the same thing are are you giving that direction because some of it seems you know like i'm really throwing myself back into this pose like exaggerated yes. and some are just you know a little bit more traditional yes okay now that i have to sh- another thing i need you to know my philosophy with working with models is is this I give them, we have a mood board, we have a theme, we have a storyboard, and we say, or I say, do what you feel in that moment, and I will capture those moments. Wow, so you're feeding off the model, yeah. I don't direct these models, and and I let them go. And I even like when I have a debutante who has no experience, and she's all fidgety, and she's doing all this weird (laughs) stuff, and I'm just shooting away. because You're like, this is great. (laughs) This is great, and it's like, and the most frustrating thing for me and after my 35 years of experience, the most frustrating thing for me is when there's a slight break, when the makeup artist says, Benjamin, I got to get on the set. I've, I've got to fix something. I will go. And the model just r- relaxes. And there is that shot that I didn't get. <laughs> oh, man. You know, you know, you know it as well as I do. You, you do it all the time. I'm looking through uh, the, your beautiful work. I love this pink, this pink uh, 
the the girl with the pink hair oh, pink ride yeah right. that was a great little right through the streets because it's kind of like what i'm drawn to is on location shooting do you prefer on location on gray in a hotel room oh man oh boy you answered all three yeses okay oh, good. Um, <laughs> they're all yes for all three um it depends on our theme we 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 treat a photo shoot like a like like a film um and we we have a script everything's scripted out um, if we don't script things out, we'll never get through our day. Mm, got it. Uh, our shoots are highly demanding. I mean, we have to shoot specific designers for specific and mix them up in a certain way. The stylist will prepare all the looks before the shoot. We'll send them off to the fashion magazine to make sure there's nothing redundant in the magazine. That wow. If you really want to piss off a magazine like Vogue, Elle, or Bazaar, uh, shoot something that's already been shot. That's the best way of shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, looking here at, at Pink Pride, and she has maybe nine to 10, 12 outfits here. And, you know, well, that's it's incredible. More than 12 outfits, pardon my interruption. It's 12 pages. On each image, there's at least two or three designers. Wow. Uh, now, when you have a single designer on a page, um, many magazines um, don't allow you to do that because they will consider that advertorial. And if, if, if a designer wants advertorial, they'll have to pay for it. So in, in nine, nine times out of ten, when you see an image on a page and you read the credits, you will see more than one credit. There are some brands that are incredibly strict, like Chanel and Dior, who say, no way you're mixing anything on this image. If you want Dior or if you want Chanel, uh, you have to specifically yeah, uh, show one look. So let me ask you this. Uh, you've been doing this a while. Um, yes. You ever still get nervous before a shoot? I know I... I got nervous, I got nervous before this interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me too. I've been doing this for a while, and I think, I think that's good to have a little bit of nervousness energy to... Uh, to get you through the shoot, to, to get you excited. It's that fight or flight that I I'm think... I'm always nervous before a shoot. Omar, I don't sleep. I, I am not exaggerating. What The problem with me and doing shoots, I'm always exhausted when I show up in the morning at the shoot. Because, really? <laughs> yes, because the night before, I cannot sleep. Oh, so okay. I, I can't. I'm too nervous. I'm thinking of... Everything, everything that has to go on but you have a team you know like a, i'm by myself you know so but yeah i have a team of eight to ten people but yeah it makes it easier because i'm I, i'm able to choose from the best of the best how do you create the mood uh are you feeding off the art director is everything already you know preconceived and can a shoot change in the middle so like a day does. at work, what is it like for you? All right. First off, um, Frederick and I are the art directors. Uh, in 99.9% .9 of the time, we create the concept. Um, very briefly, I'll go. There are collections that happen every year, twice a year, spring, summer, fall, winter. Okay, you know that. You're in New York. You know the yeah, collections. Yeah, you just had show. Fashion Week. Exactly. <laughs> so what ha Exactly. So what happens is we now know the trends. We know the looks of each of the designers. So I will be commissioned, for example, by Vogue. Okay, for I was just commissioned recently. And the theme was cinema. Mm. And we know it's a cinema th a theme. That's all they tell you. They're like, listen, we're doing oh, something cinema. Yeah, because they're, they want us. Okay, so, yes. Benjamin, it's for our special November cinema issue, okay? We want you to do a story that's 10 to 12 pages. Um... And can you get back to us with some ideas? All right, so okay, let me so. let me try. Can I pretend yeah. that I'm? Yes. All right. So maybe tropey. That's the thing that that probably makes people nervous is maybe to be yes. too tropey, too obvious, too. And I'm sure, you know, in your mind, you you maybe give a variety of ideas. I would think vintage movie theater, uh, you know, and that might be too obvious. <laughs> Yeah, that was not what we did. Uh, <laughs> exactly, so, you know. Sorry. So, so what we did was the following: um, we were very lucky in Paris that we are having COVID nineteen right now, and I'll tell you why. Because I know the director of one of the five star hotels in Paris called the Regina, which is closed. So I called him up and I said, "Look, um, I'm doing a shoot for Vogue China. It's a film story. You will be credited in the magazine. They will do an article on your hotel." 
and um, I would like to know if you'll give us your hotel for mm-hmm. free. Okay. Okay. And so knowing the guy, knowing that I've well, I've dealt with him in the past. He said, Benjamin, that's great. I will personally come. Imagine, Omar, this is incredible. I will personally come to the hotel at nine in the morning. I will open the hotel up to to you and your team have carte blanche in that hotel. Oh, wow. I mean, it's one of the most iconic hotels in Paris. So we shot the story in the lobby of the hotel. Do we have and this on story, your blog here on the magazine? It's not out yet. Oh, okay. The embargo will be lifted November 1st when it comes out. Um, so the story is the following. Omar, you're a paparazzi. No, you're not a paparazzi. Omar, you're the photographer on the set of a f- of a major motion fi- picture, you are filming what's going on during the preparation of the actress and on the set of the movie. So you will be photographing the movie from A to Z, i.e. when her hair is being done, uh, when she's, the when the clapboard. Got it. When you, you know. So my, I was a photographer on the set of a film so you see everything. It's totally nude. You see the lights. You see the film cameras. Oh, very cool. The gaffer. This is the, you see ga- everything. The gaff. You, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, you see gaffers. You see the cameraman. You see the, you know. Um, so there were a lot of people on the set, and we wanted them there. So you'd see the hairstylist. Ah, that's neat. In coming up with ideas, you know, in portrait photography, there are tropes. Like, you know, yes. don't shoot on train tracks. Don't shoot, you know, in winter, it's been overdone, a, a, a hood of some kind, you know. Yes, yes. Um, so are there known rules in, uh, are, there, are there known rules in, in fashion photography, like tropes? Yeah, yes, here's a, here's a rule. Don't, don't reshoot because no one has the budget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You better know, get it right. Know your, know your stuff well enough, exactly, that you don't have to reshoot. And, and and also know how to fake it well enough that it does come out. If it does come out badly, it still looks cool. Exactly. That's what you guys can get away with, the rubber chicken. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what no, makes me not, so no, mad. That's not fair. I'll tell you why. Okay. Uh, you, want me, you want me to give you a class, a very technical, precise, Cartesian. No, no, no. Uh, it's a, no, 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 but no, it, no. I know what you're saying. Speaking. I can do that. I know that Picasso originally was an incredible realist he could he could draw you like a photograph so all that tech crap is there in the back of my mind i can pretty much do anything i want but that is not what we want to do we want to capture moments that look legitimate and real or fake yeah but if it's going to be fake really if it's going to be super fake make it super fake. yeah yeah that's what that's the thing i love that because that explains perfectly as i'm flipping through the magazine and the dentist's office like what were they thinking and you know what it it's it makes sense it grabbed my attention it made me look at the photograph it made me try to follow that story why is she in a bad tub with ivy and you know well i'm gonna be a bit bombastic no no i'm gonna be a bit of a snob here for a moment really it depends on which magazines you're looking at. Oh, yeah, there that's the one of my of questions. Photog- a of, yeah. A lot of photographers think, well, the model's going to show up with a halter top and a pair of shorts. That is not fashion. So the process is the following. In the morning, the whole team has seen the mood board. It's been pre-discussed on conf calls. The, uh, the, the makeup artist knows the theme. They've given us a, their own um, examples. They've pulled photos from different magazines to send to us. Uh, we've sent it to the stylist. We've discussed it with them. So pre-getting to the site, we know what the model is going to look like as close as, as we can. Okay? Can you see my screen? I love this. Oh, yeah. That's India rule. Oh, you know, beautiful. Model. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. So anyways, this was haute couture. Now, that's another story entirely. Haute couture is like the Formula One of fashion. Why? Because there's only one of a kind. Um, there aren't more than one example of each there isn't i should say one more than one example of each dress and you only have the dress for about a half an hour wow because during the haute couture there are messengers driving around dropping off dresses on one shoot picking them (laughs) up going to another shoot so during haute couture you'll have maybe 60 magazines working in paris 
because haute couture is only Paris. Oh, got it. So you might have you might have Vogue China, Vogue India, uh, all the different Vogues, all the different L's, all the magazines that want to shoot haute couture. They'll all be at the locations they're shooting from, and so the poor designers have to drive these, and they have a the planning and the logistics are are outlandish but they're you know so you know like what you're looking at right there um for sorbet magazine uh was haute couture as well so do you have do you ever get uh let me put my screen back on so you could see my beautiful face okay oh your face hi there i'll do jim carrey for you (laughs) hi there have you i should just do the whole interview like that (laughs) hi there i'm from canada (laughs) <laughs> so uh, one of the struggles that a lot of photographers myself included have is that we have so many choices open to us gear wise and location wise and wardrobe wise uh okay. could do you ever get that you know paralysis 3580 uh go wide go or you just you... i'm gonna be really open with you and transparent yeah i i, I gotta tell you something it really depends on the mood I'm in the day before the shoot. Often people will say to me, well, Ben, why did you take your 50S and why not the XT3 or why not the Nikon? Yeah, yeah. And I, I honestly say, that I, I will answer this. Look, it's being published in a magazine. The biggest format it's going to be is maybe the Oh, busting. yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. So honestly, it's how lazy I am. I'll give you an example. <laughs> my, I, I swear, my last shoot, Ben, do you really, how many assistants do you have in this shoot today? Okay, you have two. Okay, so I kid you not, Omar, my last shoot for Vogue. Let me just let me just remember if this is accurate. Yes, my last. You shoot You use for the Vogue. twenty-seven millimeter pancake no, listen, lens. Listen, okay. listen, close, <laughs> close, close. I use the XT three and the twenty-three one point oh, right four here. for okay. the whole shoot. That's it, and one shot only with the fifty-six one two. That was it for the whole day. Wow. Now, Freddie had the camera on the monopod with 33 millimeter Viltrox, and I had my 18 to 55 millimeter 284 on my gimbal, on my um, Zion, uh, Zion Weebill S. Gimbal so, no I paralysis did. for you. That's great. I mean, I do the same thing. I just shot a portrait shoot with the GFX 100. And uh, that was, you know what? I'm just going out with that camera because I got it borrowed. And yes. uh, the, the, 100, the 110 millimeters, so just like an 85 equivalent. And I don't know if you know Danny Diamond. He's a portrait photographer in our area here in New York. And he uses only an 85 and only natural light. And sometimes yeah. I find that that is, some photographers, that's great for. Like if they sort of pigeonhole themselves, then it liberates them to be creative in other ways. Yes, some absolutely. of us have so many lenses and things that sometimes it may confuse you. So I think for some of you out there, if you're finding that you don't really know what your style is, or if you're struggling with what do I shoot, then reduce, 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 right. Right. you know? And just like just like Benjamin said, he went out just with the twenty three, and he rocked it. Less is more. Less is more. You yeah. know, it's interesting. If if I were, if I had only one lens to choose from, for everything, I had no choice. My numero cover, which you could show the colored one, was shot with the twenty three. Um, and numero the colorful cover. one. Oh, I got it here. The black and yeah. white one. No, the color without the black, no, the colored one. Oh, with, the, with the purple, with the girl with the purple hair here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just, that just came out. And that was shot with the, yeah, the 23 at 1.4. So I think one could get away with either the 23 and the 35. And I would suggest um, one lens could probably do all everything for you are you going is this this beautiful by the way i love the colors here is this natural light just going out and okay, yeah yeah the, the whole thing was all natural light but i have to share something with you wait i have to ask I'll a quick question because they yes pe- please people always yes. ask this do you need a permit going out there to shoot on the streets or is it one of those no. things where ap- apologize later <laughs> okay that's good okay first thing it's strange law if you have a monopod you're good if you have a tripod you're not got it same in new york okay. yeah yeah yes yeah, if yeah. you have a tripod forget about it but if you have a monopod you can do it okay? beautiful and they love and they love the spectacle they know it's oh paris. yeah it's paris you know and I mean? fashion it's, yeah exactly 
<laughs> about your question about that photo, it was, do you remember in the 1890s, 1900s, people would hand color black and white images? Yes. This was all black and white, this whole story. And it was all hand colored. This? Manually. The numero Everything. mode? Yes, sir. Wow. So all these shots were converted from black and white to color. So basically... Wow, you, we, basically so the, a lot of work for someone. <laughs> that, took, that took three weeks. Oh, wow. And get ready for this. If you see the video on this, you'll find it. Frederick, my wife, <coughs> did all... She hand-tinted the whole movie. Wow. Can you imagine moving... Come on, we that, that to, is yeah, unnecessary serious. work. Frederick, how long did you take? A month? <laughs> it took Frederick a month to do the um, That's incredible. coloring of the video. It's only a one-minute video. So uh, speaking of Frederick, what's yes. your work-life balance like? Do you leave everything behind? Are you able to well, separate the two, or are you always thinking fashion, well, work, photography? Frederick and I, well, Frederick also just opened, you'll check it out if I give her a bit of a plug, <clears throat> She, prior to this life, she was the director of media for the world for Issey Miyake, Narciso Rodriguez, and Jean-Paul Gaultier perfumes for the world. Yeah. So she was responsible for buying ad space in magazines for those brands. She's just started her own PR company called In-House Publicity, exactly how it's spelled. And um, she's launching officially on 1st of November. And it's basically a boutique luxury brand Public relations company. Oh, very cool. And, uh, and um, she does all of the co-creative direction on all the shoots. <clears throat> she does all the filming. And she does all the editing. I do the filming for Gimbal stuff. And she does all the, the other stuff. Now, and she's it, not technical at all. Is it a conscious choice of yours to not really brand yourself too much? I noticed that there isn't a lot of photographs of you. Your YouTube videos are great, but you're not in them shooting. Is that a conscious choice? or? Yeah, it's kind of a Stephen Mizell choice. Oh, ah, okay. You know, it's like Stephen, I think, has been seen two or three times. Um, There's a great uh, comic artist, too, uh, Steve Ditko, that was, there, were, there was only maybe one photograph of him. I, I'm like you, though. My head is shaved. <laughs> no, I, it, you know, if, if you scroll... If you go to my bio, you can see my picture. Oh, yeah, of course. And also, you know you have YouTube videos from like 10 years ago still on there. You're going to have to get rid of those. <laughs> yeah. if, I, if I were to say to you, if I may, uh, first off, I think you're an incredibly talented photographer. And the only thing I would tell you to do, it's very simple. You'd find out all of the major modeling agencies in New York, or if you're in Atlanta or Miami or Los Angeles... And say you'd like to do not a test. Never use that word test okay. ever. You because they'll go no way. We're not going to waste our time. What you say is I'm going to do a fashion story that I will submit to one of the many independent fashion magazines around the world that accept submissions. And what you would do is um, tell them, look, um, uh, the exchange is obviously we will use your model. And um, we will have a real stylist, a real hairstylist, makeup artist. We will choose the most current collections. And if you get a, nor a stylist, they'll have access to all of the PR agencies um, representing all the designers. And they will provide clothing that will be uh, current for the next issues that will be coming out. I'm always shooting three to four months ahead of yeah. you know, the season. You know, and um, there, are we over the 30 minutes? No, we're we're good. We're good because we'll we'll cut stuff out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just cut you off when you ramble. No. <laughs> but wait, I was going to ask something else because uh, that was great advice, by the way. And um, but my, you know they say the camera looks both ways. I when I look at my photographs, people are laughing and goofy and hugs by family and. I noticed most fashion photography that there's a specific look that you know this very stoic very <laughs> you're uh, such a diplomat <laughs> yeah <laughs> so diplomat. i would never make it i don't think i would ever make it as a fashion photographer because i'd be like you, come on give me some energy not. you know <laughs> there you go no i disagree with you you'd be like a bill king or a koto bolofo <laughs> no no koto bolofo and bill king all of their shoots were super high energy laughing it's all a question of fashion by that i mean what is fashionable today sometimes i'll do laughing shots uh because they're appropriate is there a wave of that happening? 
generally it's interesting when I let the model do what she wants to do, she won't do that. Yeah, that's a good so, point. Yeah, you know, I don't direct them to. But if they if it's an honest laugh and it's spontaneous and it's real, yes, of course. If it looks good, please, yes, I will use it. So maybe two or three images out of the ten page story will be jovial and really happy. That's great. So just to wrap up, because we're getting to the very end here, yes, is sir. think of the f- listeners and the photographers out there. What what part of fashion photography can they bring to their own maybe portrait photography or uh, what's what's kind of a technique or something? I'll, I'll, I'll pick one that you mentioned earlier is just do how you f- just do what you feel like. Go with yes. it. That was wonderful. Like I felt that when you said that that if I go and do a portrait session with one of my mitzvah teens, yes. go with it. Just whatever the kid is doing kind of thing. So that might be one example. Is there anything else in your everyday that someone could take into a shoot? Okay. Oh, just remember that when you press that shutter, Omar, it says more about you than it does about the model you're shooting. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, on one day you could be t- feeling really terrible. And what when you feel that that buzz in your solar plexus and you press the shutter maybe you wouldn't have pressed the shutter on i'm always another. pressing the shutter i'm like <laughs> <no>. <laughs> yeah got it in there somewhere yeah <laughs> okay all right that's that's a good yeah that's also another way of doing it and that's no, but that, that's where editing becomes more okay here's a right, piece of advice two things because i really want to answer your question let the don't direct you by virtue of you being there you're already directing because they're conscious of your being there so just by virtue of you being there they're conscious of everything around them so what you your biggest job is to almost make them feel like you're no longer there and you're transparent mm, that's now, great... i don't know how that applies i mean you have to let them be now if you can't let them be Give them a scenario. Say, hey, look, it, I want you to play with a drumstick or, or flip something up in the air or do something that you would do naturally. No, I, I, I'm feeding selfie. off you. I'm feeding off you. That absolutely is great. Instead of, you know, a child or, a, you know, someone being forced in front of the camera to act and smile, have them do something or even a teenager sitting thinking like just that's beautiful yeah that's beautiful. you that's might get some just listen sit there think about things with your legs crossed and then you work that no, scene no, you know your legs crossed. no don't even say that oh you're right you're right don't even say with your legs i crossed. ruined no. the shoot already <laughs> I'm sorry, no no but no <laughs> just let them be yeah and if you could just be there to chronicle that moment in time just don't be afraid of yourself photographers are so afraid of themselves they, they really think they have to they have to direct. No, you are the director Director, because you're there. That's, That's great. all that matters. I love it. That's great. It, I hope that, and finally, yeah. for you, uh, I, I'd like to say something. Um, I think the toughest thing a photographer in your position, I would never want to do what you do. I would, <laughs> I know it's Make YouTube challenging. videos? No. <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking about <laughs> no, shooting I... events and for me, it's an it's another thing. I love the production as much as I do the photo shoot. Um, but what I think you you could do as a fashion photographer, you asked me what you can bring to a portrait. Get some styling happening. Get a real stylist, or let the person put something on that lets them feel totally at ease. You're not shooting fashion. Now, if you are shooting fashion, you need to. Uh, here's my point. Don't shoot fashion unless you're ready to really do it seriously. And if you want to compete with everyone else, you have to be as good at the game as everyone else is. And just remember, this will blow you away. There's at least 200,000 fashion photographers in the United yeah. States alone. And, and he, 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 what makes you different than those 200,000 photographers, Omar? You know what the difference between you and everyone else is? You are Omar Gonzalez. There's no other Omar Gonzalez on the planet. And I'll I'll throw this last thing out to you. When I was about to move to New York City from LA, I'd gone to LA for about a year, someone said to me, Kinneric, are you out of your mind? There are 10,000 photographers in New York. And in my stupid naivete, and I I will, this is not a paraphrase, I said the following, yes, there might be 10,000 photographers, but there's only one Benjamin Kinneric. And 
I know that sounds a little bit. No, you know, it's great. It's who you are. It's who. Yeah. It's just, and that's it. it. It's thank you. Wait, there's the applause. We're adding it now. You know, in edit, we're adding it. <laughs> You, you could apply that to anything because they're the mitzvah photographers in our area. There's a dime a dozen, okay. and I I think that is what sets you apart in in any genre. Is you you sell yourself. You are yourself. People want to be with you. People want to share your you know your your love and your passion for your photographs. So that is great advice. And I think it's also your persona, Omar. I think one of the reasons you from what what attracted to me you as an individual is you're funny, you're self deprecating. You're intelligent. You have an incredibly, um, a really good vocabulary. Oh, please. Um, Thank and you. Thank I you. think you're, you're really amenable. I think, you know, so I, I can understand you doing well. I in appreciate your own, that. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm working on my vocabulary a little bit much. What's that word? <laughs> much. <laughs> All right, Benjamin, yeah. thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. Peace. Thank you for having me. All right. Peace out. Take care. So what did we learn? Well, fashion photography is weird, but in a good way. I learned that it's there's so much planning and storyboarding and teamwork that goes into making an eight-page, 12-page spread. That's the first thing I learned. And as a takeaway, we could probably say maybe we should plan our shoots a little bit more. Maybe we can team up with a makeup artist. Maybe we can team up with a vintage clothing store and work out a story to do. I think applying some of that fashion photography into some of our portrait photography would be really helpful in bringing us to the next level. And one of the beautiful parts from the conversation that I loved was capturing moments that aren't directed is maybe something to try. So I'm definitely gonna add that to the repertoire is let people be, yo, and stop directing, directing, directing. I think Ben said it great that just by you being there, you're already there <laughs> directing the shoot. And I think it's great if you try to remove yourself a little bit from some portrait sessions or from whatever uh, genre of photography you do. Ben also mentioned photographers are so afraid of themselves. You know, that's good advice to maybe let go a little bit and uh, let shoots happen a little bit more organically as opposed to overthinking things, let's say. And lastly, importantly, there's only one you. And so that's important. Just be the best you. All right, I'll see you guys on the next one.